Hey guys, Nate and Rob here from Urban Leaf. And listen, if you are interested in grow lights, uh, indoor gardening, or new technology and gadgets, then you are in the right place right now. Uh, this is the video for you. Uh, because what we're gonna be doing in this video is sharing with you an update uh, on the recent uh, beta testing of the grow light product that we're developing over here. Uh, we're gonna be talking uh, about some of the issues and the problems that uh, we've run into. Uh, that have kind of emerged through this process. And we're also going to be talking about the next steps for this product and project. Um, if you'd like to have your say on the future of this product, this grow light project, then make sure you like this video, uh, hit subscribe to the channel, and you can also leave some comments below. Uh, we read and look at each and every single comment that you guys leave on these videos. We would love to hear what you think about the project um, and have you be part of the future of this product. Okay, so you may have noticed I have a visitor here today. Uh, this is Rob, um, he's the other half of Urban Leaf and he's actually going to be taking over as the lead on this project moving forwards. Uh, so I wanted to get him on today so you guys could say hello and uh, you get to know his face. Uh, you're going to see, be seeing a bit more of him in the future uh, in this particular uh, grow light video series that we're, we're doing uh, up here on YouTube. Now guys, if this is the uh, first of this video series that you guys have seen, uh, basically what's going on here is a bit of an experiment for us. Um, essentially what we're doing is taking you behind the scenes on new product development. It's usually something that companies like us uh, try to keep pretty private uh, without really sharing too many details. Um, and truthfully, that's normally the way we do it as well. Uh, but what we're doing differently this time is kind of, you know, opening the curtains, showing you guys behind the scenes and inviting you to be a part of the development process of this new grow light product that we are working on over here. Uh, we have two prior videos on the same subject. I'm going to link them up in the corner. You can check them out later if you want to. Um, but for now, what I wanted to do is uh, dive into the beta testing and share with you guys a little bit of an update on some of the things that we've learned recently. Um, so let me start with uh, some of the problems that we ran into with the grow light. And Rob, I'm gonna ask you to pull up uh, one of the beta units that I think you have lying around there. Um, if you could hold that up to the camera, what, what you guys might be able to see, it's, it's probably a bit difficult given the resolution, but um, we had a lot of feedback about surface quality. Um, this product was kind of rough, it's kind of a grainy finish. It's not smooth and nice like you would normally expect a, you know, a manufactured plastic product to be. The reason for that is that these beta units were all 3D printed, which is an additive manufacturing uh, method. Basically, there's a whole lot of different layers of uh, plastic resin that are stacked on top of each other. And uh, the finished quality is definitely a bit rough. It's a bit coarse. Uh, but when we do go to the final version of this product, uh, we will be using injection molding for any of the plastic components we have. They're gonna be much more durable. Uh, they're not gonna snap like some of the components in these beta units did. Uh, and overall, the, the kind of look and feel of them is going to be much, much nicer. Um, the other big issue that we ran into was to do with stability. Uh, and what I'm showing on the screen here is actually a little video that uh, Rob took of one of the, the early uh, beta units we have. As you can see, it's like really, really wonky. It, we, we did not get the dimensions on this thing right at all. Um, the good news is that we've actually already addressed this. Um, between a combination of changing some of the stand geometry, basically making the leg or the foot a bit wider, uh, in addition to changing the bend radius, we've managed to get the design much, much more stable. We've run the numbers on it, and we're definitely not gonna have this same stability uh, issue in the future when we move to the final version. So there's some of the biggest uh, issues that we identified through the beta testing. Um, and honestly, that was the stuff that was you know, fairly easy to fix. Uh, what I wanted to talk about now though, is some of the stuff that's uh, proving to be a little bit harder. Um, and uh, I wanted to talk through some of the challenges that we're, we're facing as we take this project forwards. Basically, if I can be totally honest with you, the, the biggest problem that we learned about when we were doing this beta testing is that there was simply too large of a gap between what this product is gonna cost us to, to produce and what people were willing to pay for it. 
Um, we obviously need to make a margin in order for this to be viable for our business. We've got a whole lot of upfront capital costs that have to be paid for, and there does need to be a certain sort of margin between the price that we charge for the product and what it costs us to build in order for us to cover though that you know, upfront investment. And the concept that we showed our beta testers, you know, that, that, that math just wasn't working for us. So that essentially means one of two things. We had, I guess, looking forward, we have an option to, you know, compromise on the product somehow. Uh, there might be some components that we could conceivably take out and we could maybe reduce cost. Um, the other thing we could do is look at ways to increase the perceived value, uh, make the product look and feel like it's, you know, higher quality and a better quality product than these beta units did. Um, or we could do a combination of the two. Now, as engineers and you know, as guys who are really trying to put everything into this product and make it the best possible grow light that we are able to, the idea of like deliberately compromising on this and somehow making it worse just to save a few dollars really doesn't, I don't know about you Rob, but that really doesn't sit that well with me. Um, you know, we went into this to try and build the best grow light for indoor edible gardening on the market, period. You know, there is already a lot of junk out there. There's already plenty of products that are cheap and crappy and they really don't work that well. And to be quite frank with you, like we don't want to be another one of those products. Um, we want to make a really, really good product and we do not want to have to compromise on, you know, the functionality of it. Um, I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with grow lights and uh, some of the things that manufacturers do to cut costs, but I did want to share with you guys uh, some of the things that we can see. Um, one big area where grow light manufacturers often uh, try to save a lot of costs is on these things, which is a simple USB plug. You guys have probably got dozens of these things floating around your home already. They're produced in large quantities. They're super, super cheap to produce. And a lot of manufacturers will just buy one of these off the shelf as their power supply because they are so cost effective. Now, the problem with that, if you've ever looked at the fine print on these things, which you can usually find on, on the surface here, is uh, they run at five volts typically, and they're usually limited at about two amps, which means that this can never do more than about 10 watts, which is kind of on the lower side for a grow light, especially if you're talking about a grow light for edible plants. To put that you know, maximum 10 watts into context for you, uh, the beta units that we put together were running at about 25 to 26 watts. So using a cheap plug like this for our product would have meant that the power supply was about 60% under, underpowered. Um, so, you know, an option like that to save cost isn't really an option uh, for us given, you know, the current configuration we have with this super, super high powered light. Um, the other thing uh, that you often see grow light manufacturers do is that they will try to cut corners on the LED chips that they use. Um, LED chip technology is evolving and changing very, very rapidly, um, which means that if you use older chips, they're usually pretty significantly inferior, um, whether it in terms of their output, their efficiency, whatever. What I'm showing on the screen right now is a chart that basically shows the efficacy or efficiency of different grow lights. And uh, the y-axis here is PPF, which is basically a measure of plant available light. So the useful output that you're getting from each grow light divided by the watts coming in. So it's output versus input which you know, when you put them over the top of each other is essentially a, a measure of efficiency. Anyway, what you can see here with these blue bars, I just wanted you guys to kind of take note of how much variance there is here. Like the, the least efficient grow light that we have tested and measured on this chart is about 90% worse in terms of this metric than the best chart on, on this, uh, the best grow light on this chart. Uh, we've got another diagram down here um, which shows uh, the amount of uh, PPF that you can get out per LED. And you'll notice that there's a huge variance here as well. So I guess what I'm trying to tell you is here that like 
you know, not all LED grow lights are created equal um, and manufacturers of these things do do a whole lot of, you know, tricky little things to try and save costs and, uh, and produce what we think is often, you know, an inferior quality product. So the, the final thing that you'll see some grow light manufacturers do is skimp on optics or lenses. And the reason that this is relevant is that grow lights, and in fact all lights, use optics or lenses to really uh, channel and direct the light uh, where it is going to be most useful. And in our case, that's on the leaves of the plant, obviously. Now, in this little video I'm showing in the background here, uh, this is a, a time lapse I did when we were doing some of the testing. Uh, that little gadget I'm using there is a palm meter, and we're taking different light readings um, across this sort of uh, sheet of brown paper I've got there. Um, and what I want you to notice is, see how there's like a really, really overexposed section in the middle of that brown paper? Um, but then around the edges of that, it gets a fair bit darker. Well, that's basically because of the optics. And so what these little optics or lenses are doing is channeling uh, all of the available light down towards the plant. And again, this is an area where some manufacturers do not use optics. It's obviously cheaper um, to not have them in, um, but it does mean that your light tends to get spread out much further, which you know is technically a little bit uh, less efficient. So, um, there's some of the things that we've learned about um, the grow light. Uh, we've learned a whole lot from uh, the beta testers and we've done a whole lot of different measurements and experimentation with these beta units as well. Um, but basically, uh, the challenge that we now have and what we're trying to figure out is how to get the unit economics of the product to make sense. And we are really, really committed to doing that in a way that we do not uh, compromise the use or functionality of the grow light. We have no desire at all to produce yet another crappy grow light. You guys can jump on Amazon and buy, you know, one of dozens of them that already exist. So uh, yeah, that's why we're getting Rob involved. Um, he kind of runs the engineering design over here at Urban Leaf. Uh, he is going to be taking over this project moving forwards. And Rob, this seems like a good uh, opportunity for you to take over here. So I'll let you say a little bit more about uh, what you what we have in store for the grow light here. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the context. And I just wanted to start by saying I have really enjoyed all the feedback we've gotten on these videos so far. Uh, it's just very helpful to have more opinions, more ideas, all that coming in to sort of keep guidelines on our design. Uh, so, yeah, you've summed up the, the problem, uh, and I think we're really mostly focusing on streamlining it. So how can we make it simpler? How can we make it less expensive and still keep what's essential, which is like the high quality function and decent looks? Um, so just taking a step back when we started, we were really trying to make this like single grow light that would work in most most situations for people so they would only need to buy one if you have a cabinet you could stick it under the cabinet if you didn't you could get a stand and just use that same light on a stand so you move from one apartment to another you wouldn't need to get a new light each time it's sort of like our idea behind this product um and it still might work that way but in some sometimes like when we're optimizing for an under cabinet we make slightly different and maybe more costly decisions than if it's a stand or vice versa. So we're gonna keep pushing on that concept a little bit further, but if we're unable to find an elegant solution for a bar that can work under cabinet and a stand where we're not doing anything terribly inefficient, uh, then if we can't find that kind of like elegant solution to both, then we might just need to pick one, design it, and then go for another. Uh, the first step we did and this is very inconclusive was trying out a bunch of different form factors and just polling people on instagram so uh the acrylic one and the stand both represent like some significant cost savings because it doesn't need to be adjusted and that's if we use lenses like you said before they kind of make it so you don't need to adjust because the light is so well channeled um so that's one way we might be able to save money, but like we clearly don't yet have the stand here that's like a clear winner in terms of uh, aesthetics or like people thinking it's got a great perceived value or loving it. So definitely more work to be done on exploring stands. Uh, 
but yeah, I think if we get rid of adjustability, that might be one one area where we could maybe realize some some serious cost savings. That definitely simplifies the design quite a bit. Uh, we're also going to look at stands that have like less metal and less material. Uh, once we've figured out that general form, we're going to go back and test different finishes. Again, this was sort of an early test on that original form with different finishes. This did have some pretty conclusive results, uh, mostly just around the use of wood on the top. So that's definitely something we're going to seriously consider uh, in the future designs. But of course, like every design is its own thing. And just because wood worked here, if we totally change everything up and like make it acrylic, like wood might not work there. Or if it was an under cabinet, like wood might not make sense. Or the extra cost might not make sense there. Uh, so with all these designs in each of these steps, our general strategy is going to be to go from like six designs uh, to get the general form right down to three that we sort of polish up and then take that down to one uh, where we can really specify it and make sure it feels and works smoothly and feels nice to use. Uh, and at each of those levels, I'm going to be coming on here, showing you guys the design and trying to get feedback about like what you like, what you don't like to sort of sharpen each of these like general strategies and uh, figure out which ones we drop as this competition moves forward. Uh, and just overall, a lot still in the air, uh, but as we move through this, there's like a few things we are firm on and the things that won't change or we won't compromise on. And that's really its ability to deliver high quality light to the plant leaves and providing this a good function at the best value we can. So uh, it's not gonna be the cheapest on the market. It's definitely not gonna be the most expensive on the market. But what we're really trying to do is provide the best function at the lowest cost that we can produce that for. Um, so that's sort of our attitude moving forward. And I'm curious to see, uh, yeah, kind of where this goes and, and how it develops as we take it down this this final sort of competition to figure out the form and the shape and the stand. Cool. Well, thanks, Rob. Um, and thank you all for tuning in for the video. Um, we're really, really enjoying this process. Um, as I said, it's something quite different for us. Um, we don't usually, you know, share this much information with the general public on, you know, pre-release products, but we do hope you're enjoying the process. Um, we certainly are. We're really, really appreciating your feedback, uh, your questions, your comments. So please keep them coming. Um, and I guess that's it. Um, so thanks again, guys. We will be back in probably February uh, with another update video then. But until then, stay happy, stay well, stay safe, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys. Take care.